Hello all, welcome to EC Electronics. In this video, we are going to see some questions from the 2019 ISRO Technical Assistant Examination. Okay, so this is a part 3 of ISRO Technical Assistant 2019 uh, solution video. Okay, so uh, the Satish Dhawan Space Center uh, recruitment is also out for the post of Technical Assistant in Electronics. Okay, if you are preparing for the uh, same also, you can also watch this video, it will be helpful for you. Okay, so let us see what is the first question for today's class. The current in a coil of inductance 5 Henry changes linearly from 10 Ampere to 2 Ampere in T seconds. If the induced EMF is 40 volt, what is the type T? Okay, so uh, the options given are option A, 1 second, option B, 2 seconds, option c 4 second and option b 8 seconds okay so before going into the uh, before going into answering this question let us see the basics of an inductor this is a very basic thing so in an inductor we know that due to the time varying current there is a time varying magnetic field generated in the in the inductor right so there is a Time varying magnetic field is been, being generated in the inductor due to the time varying current. Okay. And when this uh, time varying magnetic field is increasing or is generated in the inductor coil, it will try to oppose the change. Okay. So when this uh, current is time varying, this inductor will actually try to oppose the time varying nature of this current. And it generates an EMF against, against this current, time varying current. So, when something is changing in the inductor, it is not favoring the inductor, it will try to oppose. So, that is actually happening here. And this induced EMF is given as 40 volt. So, this EMF is actually against the time varying current, right? So, the equation for this time varying EMF is given by V is equal to minus d i by dt into l or you can write it as minus l into di by dt okay so this is the emf generated against the change in current that is di by dt it is opposing right so that is why it is given a negative sign that is it is against i hope the concept is clear now so I hope the concept of inductance or inductor and the time varying nature is clear. Now I am going to apply the uh, values given in this question to this equation which is V equal to minus L into di by dt and I am going to find the value of it. Okay, so first let us try to understand what is given in the question. An inductor or of value 5 Henry uh, in it that current is changing from 10 ampere to 2 ampere. So the current is actually what it is decreasing. Now, what is the value of change in current or di? Di is actually decreasing or the current is decreasing from 10 ampere to 8, uh, sorry, 10 ampere to 2 ampere. So, the current is 2 minus 10 which is equal to minus 8 ampere is the current. So, since the current is decreasing, it is a negative value. So, di is minus 8 ampere. Now, it is given that the current is changing in T seconds means it is the di value is T. So, sorry, dt value is T. See, they are saying that the current is changing in T seconds means it is that duration of time in which the current is decreasing. So, dt is actually given in the question as T. Okay, so we have obtained the value of di, we have obtained the value of dt. Now, uh, it is given that the induced EMF is 40 volt. So, V is directly given as 40 and L is given in the question as 5 Henry. So, all the details are given in the question. Let us substitute the values in this equation and try to find. Okay, so I hope the uh, values are clear. That is how to figure out these things from the question. Uh, it is clear. Okay, so directly we can apply in the equation and find the result. I am going to substitute. So, the V value is 40 is equal to minus L is 5 Henry into DI value is minus 8 since the current is DK and DT value is given as T. That is the, in T seconds this change is happening means DT is given as T. 
So, this is very simple to solve. T is equal to 40 into 8 fives are 40. So, T is equal to 1 seconds. Okay. So, the correct answer for this question is option A is equal to 1 second. So, in order to solve this question, you only need to understand the basic equation. And you have to substitute the values given in the question into the equation. And you should know that how these values are being identified from the question. That is how to figure out the value of di, how to figure out the value for uh, dt, all these things you should know. Okay, so the correct answer for this question is option A, which is... The bandwidth of a video signal is 4.5 megahertz. Hertz. The signal is to be transmitted using PCM with 1024 quantization levels. The minimum bit rate for transmission is dash. So this signal is been transmitted using pulse code modulation or PCM. So one thing is clear that it is being digitized. So this is a PCM is a digital transmission or a modulation technique. Okay, so they are asking the minimum bit rate for transmission. Okay, so in order to pulse code modulate the signal, what are the things we need to do? We need to first sample the signal and we need to digitize the signal, right? That is converted into digital modulation. Okay, so uh, in order to sample the signal, what is the criteria? The criteria is that we should follow the Nyquist criteria for sampling in order to perfectly reconstruct the signal back to your original signal. Okay, so it is given that the bandwidth B is equal to 4.5 megahertz, right? So if the signal bandwidth is 4.5 megahertz, then what is the sampling frequency or sampling rate according to the Nyquist criteria? So the sampling rate Fs is equal to 2 into B, right? According to the Nyquist criteria, it is actually it should be greater than or equal to 2 into B. So, I am taking here equal to. So, uh, it is correctly greater than or equal to. Okay. So, it will, should be greater than or equal to 2 into B means it is bandwidth which is 4.5 megahertz. Right. So, it should be greater than or equal to 9 megahertz. Okay. So, the sampling rate Fs is equal to I am taking as 9 megahertz. Because if you are going to. Uh, transmit the signal using PCM, you need to digitize the signal. First for that you need to sample the signal, then you need to quantize the signal. So for sampling, according to the Nyquist criteria, the sampling rate is obtained as 9 megahertz. Fine. Now we are moving on to the next step. It is directly given the question that with uh, 1024 quantization levels, so the quantization level Q is given as 1024. Okay. So, what is the equation for Q? Q is equal to 2 raised to number of bits N. So, in a simple way or in the very basic way if you are talking about the quantization levels, you know that NADC is being used for quantizing your signal. So, uh, N means here 2 raised to N is the quantization level and the N means the number of bits with which the ADC represent each sample or each value that is called the number of bits or n. So here the quantization levels is obtained by using the equation 2 raised to n where n is the number of bits of the ADC. Okay so this 2 raised to n is given as 1024. So 2 raised to n you can write it as Sorry, uh, 1024 you can write it as 10, uh, 2 raised to 10. So the value of n is actually what? n is equal to 10. So the number of bits of the ADC or the number of bits with which the ADC represent each sample or uh, analog value or corresponding uh, sample value is 10. Okay, so the number of bits is 10. Now number of bits is 10 and the sampling rate is fs is, is equal to 9 megahertz then what will be the bit rate so the minimum bit rate or the equation for minimum bit rate is equal to n into fs so this is the equation if you want to note it down you can note it down so n is the number of bits and fs is the rate so Number of bits is obtained as 10 and the rate is obtained as 9. So, 
it is 9 megahertz right so it is 90 megahertz is the bit rate okay so it is obtained from the sampling rate and by taking the number of bits of the digital representation so it is n into fs which is equal to 9 into 10 that is 90 megahertz is your answer so if you uh, know this basic things you can simply do just think about how the process is happening and what all things are given in the question just try to figure out the details from the question and apply in your equation for that also you should need uh, to know this equation also okay so the correct answer is option a which is 90 mbps or megabits per second so this is actually mbps okay so I'm, I'm writing it in hertz so the correct option or the unit is megabits per second it is a meg value so 90 mbps is the rate okay find the i and v in the given circuit so uh, the circuit given is this and you need to find the value of voltage across the diode and the current flowing through this 2.5k resistor options given are a 2 milliampere uh, 0.6 volt b 0 milliampere 0 0.6 volt c 0 milliampere 5 volt and d 2 milliampere minus 5 volt okay so this is a very basic question so what is actually v v is the voltage across the diode okay so let us see whether the diode is forward biased or reverse biased okay so the anode of the diode is connected to minus 5 volt and the cathode is connected to zero or the ground so it is in which configuration it is in the reverse bias configuration so very, the very basic things of the diode is that when a diode is a is in reverse bias configuration it will just act as a open circuit and if it is in forward bias con uh, configuration it just act like a uh, it will conduct in that mode and also it acts like a, a small cell or a voltage okay i have done a detailed video on the diodes okay i'll be uploading that video very soon so please do watch the video for uh, identifying these type of problems how to solve it the diode problems okay so anyway in this uh, question if you see the diode is in reverse bias configuration or reverse mode so you can consider this as an open circuit okay so now one thing is clear that the voltage uh, we need to find anyway the current across this resistor is zero because this is an open circuit connected with the series resistor and the current flowing through the resistor will be i is equal to zero milliampere will be your value okay now what is the value of this voltage if you apply the uh, equivalent thevenin's equivalent theorem across this uh, circuit or connection you can see since the diode is in reverse bias the voltage will be equal to if this is a minus 5 volt so the voltage is equal to b equal to 5 volt will be the voltage okay since the diode is in reverse bias condition if it was a forward bias condition it should have been minus 5 volt okay so anyway here since the diode is in reverse bias condition the voltage is 5 volt coming across the diode terminals so the value of voltage is 5 volt and also the current flowing through this resistor is equal to 0 so the correct answer is option a sorry option c which is 0 milliampere and 5 volt is your current and the voltage value so this question if you know the basics you don't need to use your pen note so you can directly answer the question by thinking okay so let us see what is the next question next question is the data rate of qpsk is dash as that of bpsk for same symbol right okay so uh, this is a very basic question qpsk is quadrature phase shift key and BPSK is binary phase shift key, right? So, if quadrature phase shift key or QPSK sends two bits per symbol, then BPSK sends one, one bit per symbol. That is, for one symbol, the QPSK sends how many bits? Two bits. Whereas, for one symbol, BPSK sends only one bit. So, from this itself, the answer is clear. That is, twice. That is the QPSK has a uh, data rate of 2 times is that of the BPSK. So the correct answer is option B which is twice. Next question is the memory with 8 bit data bus and 16 bit address bus can store a maximum of dash. So uh, it can store a maximum of actually since the address bus is 16 bit 2 raised to 
16 bytes. That is, if you say 2 raised to 16, it is equal to 64 kilobytes. It gets 2. Okay. So, the correct answer for this question is 2 raised to 16, which is equal to 64 kilobytes of memory. The this particular database or the address space or this uh, unit, memory unit can store. 6 to 16 which is equal to 64 kilobytes. Okay, so this memory unit can store a maximum of 64 kilobytes. Okay, so the correct answer is option C. Okay, so these are the questions which I have included in this video. I hope this video will be useful for your technical assistant exam preparation for ISRO also for Sadish Dhawan Space Center because mostly the exam pattern on the questions will be same. Okay, so uh, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up and also share this video with your friends. And if you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Thank you.